Hello world, I'm Zenit and welcome to this new let's hack of the hack the box machine nunchucks. Now you can see the, the logo of it, here you can see it now. That's basically the logo of the challenge. It's rated as an easy challenge. It's about Linux, web, Node.js, server side template injection and suite. So I'm not entirely sure if that should be easy or not, but however, that's how it's been rated amongst the user rating. Some have decided to rate it medium, I guess, but we will find out together what this machine is gonna be. I have done nothing so far except just run a scan that has now been completed. Perfect. So the scan I've run was a simple nmap scan that scanned every port, gathered all the infos, <laughs> scanned all the vulnerability so i guess it wasn't that simple of a scan but okay bear with me and then i created like all these files with all the information so that we can retrieve it later on now i hope i did that on the right ip let me quickly check that yeah exactly everything is perfect so what do we have open so far let me check out the the document we have 22 which is SSH we should know that now we have a couple of vulnerabilities but I usually don't like to play around with SSH because most of the time it's pretty solid um, except for maybe heartbleed and that stuff so that's not usually what we're gonna target we have however a website running on port 80 and 443 which is HTTP or HTTPS respectively they run both on this version of Nginx, but it couldn't find automated exploits for XSS, passwords, and CSRF. And even like this CVE script execution failed, we have that on all the things, so we have no automatic, how do you say, vulnerability found, we cannot just put it in, in Metasploit and have fun with it and be done with it. No, we have to manually go and check this website. Now, for that I need the IP, we can copy that from here and paste it in here. So let's take a look. All right, that's perfect. We're off to a good start. What's happening? I can't access the website. Okay, but... Um, did I accidentally crash the server? Is that what happened? No, apparently not. Maybe let's start Firefox from in here and go to this one. All right, okay, so it looks like it has trouble finding that website. Now, I suggest that the problem lays within me not having this um, server name in my hosts file. So whenever I try to go to this one, it fails. And I guess the website has an auto redirect to do that. So we can check that if we just curl it, we have moved permanently. Then we try with the dash L and then we get, we can, could not resolve host. Now for those of you that don't know, curl is essentially a tool for your command line where you can perform URL actions you can basically talk web on the command line with this one. So if you don't do anything, it will just do a basic get uh, like we did here. And if you do a basic get, you get this 301, which is a HTTP code and tells you that, hey, this website is at another location, similar to Toad at the end of the first Super Mario castle, where it tells you Peach is another, in another castle. Basically, this is what the website is telling us. Now with the dash L option in curl, we tell curl to whenever the princess is at another castle, go search it at the other castle. But we cannot find the other castle because we don't have the directions. Now usually host names get resolved via DNS or the host files. So the one way we do it in the internet is via DNS. There obviously is no DNS for this host. So we can circumvent that with using host files. So the first location your PC looks for is your host file. And then it checks it in the 
DNS thing. That's a whole nother topic, which I won't go into detail here. But for us, what we need to do here is open up Vim. I'm not sure if we have to do this as sudo or you can use any other editor. I just like Vim the most. And I think the file in Linux is at etc hosts. And we need to add an entry for this IP to go to this host name. Now, now our, uh, our, how do you call it? Our, our PC essentially knows where to find this. So as you can see here, we got this. I think we can use a lowercase k. Yeah, okay, so with the lower, so the first error I got here, let me just run it again. The first error I got while running curl L and then this one is that the SSL certificate is not valid. All right, we can skip the certificate checks with curl by supplying a lowercase k and then we don't check for the SSH and we get some HTML back, which seems, uh, which tells me that basically we have access to the website now. So let's try this. Yeah, we have a potential security risk ahead. We can check why that is. Um, after, I mean, I think maybe after we are there. <clears throat> so the certificate issuer is not known. I think that's a given seeing as how can I check more information? And then we can view the certificate. So this is how you can verify who signed this thing. We have to look for something in the realms of CA or yeah, where, where do we see the, the, the signer? Issuer name, exactly. So the issuer name is Nonchuck CA. We have no idea who that is. We don't trust that party. So essentially this is not a valid certificate for us but we can go ahead and skip it it shouldn't be a problem for this challenge i hope but it looks to me as though we are trying to hack this website now how do we do this at best i think nunchucks is supposed to be a leading online shop creation platform all right sounds cool we have a couple of information going on in here by the way, let me know in the comment if you ever had some nunchucks and if you had, did you also hit your head with it like I did when I was a child or did you have like a nice childhood? <laughs> or you could say a boring childhood. Now we have some links, but essentially everything on this website is just like text and oh yeah, these are our features, this is details, blah, blah, blah. Oh, what's Lightbox? Let's click on it. Ooh. And essentially every part of this website is telling us to sign up, sign up. So let's click on start selling, which is also the sign up form and we can register. So let's take a look at what webs, what email do we have to use a real email? So let's just try test a test name is test and password is yeah thank you firefox for showing that securely generated password to the entire internet so we're just going to use test as a password agree with the site's policy sign up we're sorry but registration is currently closed okay that's that's a weird that's that's weird it looks like we need to inspect this a little bit further and we can do that with a nice tool called Burp Suit. Now I'm using the community edition in here. So you could also try to use that uh, to solve this challenge with the community edition. I don't know if we have to use intruder at the time. Uh, intruder is throttled in the community edition because Portswigger wants you to buy the pro version. But I, I guess it's enough for us. So let me start burp and then I have to do a quick check if it looks good on the screen or if it or if it's too too small of a font. It should look good, but just to be to make uh, low, low to user options, let's use the same options as, as in my live streams, which is gonna look terrible. <laughs> this looks 
Oh my gosh, I can't believe how incredibly ugly this looks like that, but that's not what uh, what matters. Let's turn off interception, open the browser. Actually, we can use it. Uh, what purpose is basically an interception proxy. It will filter out like all the traffic and then you can inspect it. I'm going to show you a little example of how that looks like. So let's go to our nunchuck sign up page. Set the intercept on, click in here, boom, go to the sign up. What the hell, keyring? Okay, that worked. And now you can basically debug the traffic. I like to call it an HTTP debugger because you basically break at every request. You see what gets sent where. So this is a basic get. This is nothing interesting. We're just going to get this website. So let's just turn intercept off. <coughs> Sorry for that. And try the test at test.com with the name test and the password test. So now we want to set the intercept back on and sign up. And then we get exactly what we're sending to the application. So in here, it looks like we're sending the password to clear text. That's fantastic. Um, okay. I mean, that's not, that, it's not really something wrong with that per se. I just, think maybe we could encrypt it in the or hash it in the client so that people like me cannot just intercept your password now if we forward we don't get anything back like usually there is a request and response but we can check this out in the http history in here we see the if i have to make this a little bit bigger we have the request so that's basically what we sent and this is the response we got it's we're sorry, but registration is currently closed. Now we see here an X powered by Express. So this tells me it's using an Express Node.js framework. Now, if we go back to our scan, we didn't get any information about Express in here. So that's something new we gathered, which is a perfect place, a perfect thing to put in our nodes. So running web server, equals express and then let's just copy this make this a code block paste it in here and we're good to go maybe let's highlight this somehow with uh, this is the web server something like that yeah okay i mean i think we don't have more time to do something in this first episode I hope you're thrilled for this challenge. It looks pretty weird to me. I think we have to do some deer busting in here, but I have no idea what we're into right now. So I hope to see you in the next episode and leave a comment if you like this format. I really like to do this format. It's really fun to do some hacking and talk with you guys. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? What, what the box should I do the next? And see you next time. Bye-bye.